Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. Back here with James. And we're going to continue our progress on the dirt track of Charlotte. Glad to have any and all that are joining. All right, just to go over a brief overview of what I'm going to work on today. Uh, I'm going to work on these billboards here. Uh, yay, more billboards. Um, there are three left on the front, and we went ahead and made the decision because we don't have enough information for the back side to go ahead and just paint generic textures on the back, which will be uh, just a generic wooden background or something. But uh, got three left on the front side here. Uh, you can also see a score tower. Uh, that's just a placeholder at the moment. Uh, we've got some painting work to do there. I'll fly around here in just a second to show you the work that I've done up to this point. And then I'll get started on the three that need to be completed. Yeah, you've obviously got uh, a little bit more done than what I've actually got on my end, which is good. Um, offline there, as you were talking about the scoring thing, this, that actually has a state switch in it to where it'll be empty uh, during anything other than race. Obviously this is a placeholder. Um, this is not going to be the finished product, but it gives us an idea of where it's going to be, somewhat how it's going to look, especially with the, uh, the digits. It's nice that those are in um, separate objects too. It's not you don't have to do everything you know something to the whole spiel there. I uh, will probably show um, applying that script uh, to get that to function in the appropriate manner um, in this stream. Um, as for right now, as I was telling James offline here, I'm going to fix this texture. I guess that I did for the infield. Uh, so that it doesn't look like it's giant hungus blades of grass. Um, I've got that open right now, so we'll work on that. So, just wanted to share uh, just the amount of work that goes into these. I know it's been almost two weeks just working on these billboards. Uh, the one that you're seeing now, where racing lives dot com, uh, with the charger on it, that took four hours yesterday. Uh, wanted to get that one done off stream and I had no idea it was going to take that long so I'm glad I did but I uh, just wanted to show the reference material that we had to work with on that and it was just a single picture here it took forever to figure out what that text said and then obviously not being able to uh, find an image of that race car uh, it was a lot of detective work going through and basically searching that phone number was the only thing that we could make out initially. Obviously, if you know what it says, it's easy to read what it says, but going into that not knowing what it said, you have no idea. That was adventure uh, in itself, that was for sure, because I was assisting you on that. So I actually took the... Uh... Thank you very much for that. Uh, Spencer and uh, basically took the charger and painted a flat car file and then obviously rendered it and then used that as the picture. Getting an error on my channels, I'm just checking this out real quick, James. What's that for? I know something about a live version, just making sure that's uh stream looks okay on this end, so obviously I can see the error. You can see the error? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get that removed, I'm not sure. Trying to refresh the screen. Sorry there, folks. A little technical difficulty here. Just making sure if they're uh, 
anybody seeing a error on my stream trying to deal with that right now? I don't know why it's doing that. And it goes to an ad. <laughs> Your stream's coming through fine, James. Yeah, your stream looks fine. Uh, just seeing the error on top of everything else. I, I don't recognize that. Well, it's not letting me. It's just saying that the website is offline, and I don't understand that because obviously we're still streaming. I don't know how to get rid of it. That's the first time that's ever happened. Sorry, folks. Uh, possibly restart your stream. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to go offline here real quick, folks, and I will be right back. Apologies for that. So I'm going to work on the Welcome to Dirt Track at Charlotte billboard, which is the one above the Circle K billboard. Okay, that happened to be, I guess, in the um, in the expo itself. Okay, looks like that might be okay now. Sorry about that, folks. Technical difficulties on my end. Yeah, it looks like it went away now. Not really sure why they came up. I'll have to check that out. It was obviously an exploit deal there. Okay, going back to what I was originally trying to do. Working on this infield. Uh, basically, all I'm doing is uh, before when I laid this grass texture down. Um, I didn't rescale it. I just kept the texture the same as it was as it is applied in the track mat um, to the rest of the track. So what I've done is I've scaled it down so that it looks more uniform with the rest of the grass that's around the track in this 3D object texture. I'm going to do that. Hopefully everybody's having a good Thursday evening. Yeah, I think this is the first time we've done it on a Thursday. We tried it on a Wednesday, and that didn't pan out too well. Yeah, and uh, Twitch was being very flaky yesterday, so... Yes, it was. I know you showed me a couple different times, too. I remember watching some different streams offline. I've got these other pieces uh, just to give those an indication of what I'm trying to do here. This is the original uh, texture that I made. Um, I didn't save it as a layered thing like that, but I figured it would be easy enough. All I've done is taken a magic wand Shop Pro and I've separated all these different pieces so here's the um, transparent area and this one this is the pathways all the paved areas um, and another and then I got the what I'm going to do is relay this grass down on the original texture and then apply those two other ones basically using the original uh, texture as a template or guide
<clears throat> would like to give a fair mention um, to anybody that's watching. If you have anything in specific you would like to see us demonstrate or uh, give a better explanation of how to do something, um, let us know in the chat. Uh, we are monitoring that as, as we go along. And we'll see what we can uh, do. And that applies to YouTube later as well. If you're viewing this on YouTube later or Twitch archives, uh, leave us a comment and we'll get back to you as quick as possible if we can. Yes, we were trying to do these not only for our own benefit, but for um, viewers out there as well. Now, as much as I was complaining about that billboard with the charger on it, to be honest, that's kind of fun doing that detective work. Yeah, it was kind of frustrating there in a, for a while there, just trying to figure out what the number was, because obviously, uh, what did we say? It was uh, one of the colonies in, um, in and around the Charlotte area. Yeah, and it kept coming up with the Dale Trail, which is a self-guided tour of uh, Kannapolis area for Dale Earnhardt fans that can go to different areas. And I th kept thinking, well, why in the world would they have a picture of a charger on a billboard advertising for Dale Earnhardt? But it was just for the county is what it was for, so. Right, and I think it, as you and I found out, it was like uh, kind of almost a Chamber of Commerce thing as far as like all the things you can do and at county which is kind of actually neat you know because uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes in and that yeah, goes on in and around Charlotte Concord area Trying to make this less look less staggered, you know, like I can see all the different seams. Um, so I'm going to play with this a little bit. Plus, I had a gap, uh, just a little sliver on the very end there, so I need to fill that in. Okay, now I got all my new grass laid out. Turn that layer off. Back to my original and apply my paved pathways here. Wow, I hit that perfect. That hardly ever happens. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I kept the edges, I guess, a little bit more jagged, uh, not quite so smooth, so I could please separate these out just like I have it. So 
So far, so good. Now, I'll turn back on my new grass. Now I can see the pathways, the layer for the pathways I put over top of that. As well as the new grass. Now I'll apply this um, masking. That'll be the transit out area. That's, that's an area that won't be used as far as on the object itself, but it'll clean that up really nicely. I'm definitely going to save this as a layered template. And now I have a revised texture. I can turn off the original. Don't need it. And let's, let's save this as a new layered template for future reference. Okay, what I'm doing now is saving that as another flattened bitmap. And now I'm going to call up that new texture I just created. As a bitmap. It's right here. And I'm going to create a TGA with a transparent color, in uh, other words, an alpha channel, it'll create transparency. Make sure I save it in the right spot. <laughs> that always helps. There it is. And I'm going to go ahead and make a MIP texture for that right away. Open that TGA I just created. It's already got the transparent color. So I don't need to those parameters will work just fine I know you and I talked about that offline too James about um, um, using the type 10 map 1 as opposed to map 3 you know, because of the compression and such right I, I totally got what you were saying though as far as uh, why you use the map one as opposed to the three. Um, clarification I guess on that, you know, just doing a little bit more um, work on offline. The difference between using a map three and a map one is how the texture is applied to the different polys. And basically with the three, what it does is it tends to repeat that texture across, you know, however many polys you have on the object. So if it's a really long poly, really big or small poly, what it tends to do is try to put that same texture repeatedly, I guess, across that. And what that tends to do, especially if you keep it at a type 10, 
with that compression, it makes it look not so crisp. So when you use the one, it's just basically the tech, taking the texture one time and say, okay, wherever you place the UVW uh, unwrap modifier on that object, on that model, it only does it one time as opposed to trying getting it in there like multiple times. So I learned something, I guess, uh, in that process too. I was not aware, I was always under the assumption that using a map of one was using for something, uh, you know, for an object that you wanted it repeated, like say for grandstands, for instance, using a zero or a one map. You have just like one singular texture and you want it repeated across a long stretch of model. That's not necessarily always the case. And like you said, it has to do with how you map the model in 3ds Max too. Right. Well, and then I guess that's what led me to believe when I had uh, looked at one uh, billboard um, that we were trying to get the stage switches in there uh, for the scoring. Uh, after looking at the model, opening, uh, applying the UVW uh, unwrap modifier to it, and it's like it's done no differently than if you were to put a three and or a one map on the texture. So that's something else we talked offline too as far as um, um, that's something I will probably show in the stream if we have the time permits uh, to show how to apply two different textures to one model. Without having to have uh, two separate objects obviously. Okay, I want to put my texture into the track. I'd just like to point out that my life has now uh, devolved into me searching for Facebook logos for, for a 12 year or 13 year old game. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Longevity, man. I was talking to the guys at work about doing this, and I was like, I can't remember ever adding social media stuff to any of the tracks that we worked on for SBP together. Um, I think this is the first project that I've ever added a social media to anything. It seems like every single one of these billboards has some kind of link to a social media account. Well, look at the look at the individual uh, drivers' cars anymore across all the different series. I mean, they put their hashtag whatever. Twitter and all that good stuff on there. Just... Yeah, instead of having, having their driver's name, some of them have their Twitter name. Yep. Times they are changing, but yet some things still stay the same. Alright, we're going to take a look and see how this texture, this new texture looks on that object. Going to reopen us. Uh, track here wow it already looks good just from this angle let's try camera view oh this is something else that I've worked done doing a lot of homework on this track I guess um, this is something else uh, I've been working on offline as far as uh, getting the ground built up I guess against the wall uh, that's what I've done here you can see all this is the front stretch on uh, next to the main grand and it has a little ramp access here I guess for them to leave the pit in the pit area this eventually is going to all get paved um, that's not supposed to be dirt and or grass because uh, the, the cars that race on the track they get to go all the way around uh, those billboards and uh, to the back stretch to the entrance of the pits of, over in turn three. That's something else I've been working on. Let's see how this texture looks though. Yeah, that's better. Got a little bit of different color. Not terrible. Better than the Chihongus blades of grass that I had there. <laughs> yeah, we'll need to clean up some of this. 
Eventually, I could probably do that now. Beautiful. Once you start getting uh, our objects in the infield here at all, that'll look really nice. Uh, we got some uh, light fixtures to put on these motor circles. Uh, these paved areas, there's some uh, lighting there, as well as safety vehicles and whatnot. Oh, that was something else too, James. I, I've done a lot of editing, I guess, offline there. I had to redo the cameras, um, the, particularly the pit cameras and the spectator. I was and testing the track or whatever. Those those views that I had in there was just not right. It just didn't give the track any justice. So I did those. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I noticed the pit one camera, the first one you see. Yeah, it's like way out there. It's over by there by the drag strip. <laughs> um, speaking of that, fly out here a little bit see what's going on here. And this is what James put together. Look at the detail in this thing. It's just beautiful. Too bad you can't see it all from the track, but yeah, and that model is not fully mapped either. I've still got some cleanup work to do on it. Looks awesome though. Even that uh, grandstands for the full track out there in turns one and two with the restrooms and that. That's we're gonna get that highway in there. I think that's gonna look even better. Get some car cars going up and down the highway type of action. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is fix this issue here. Uh, that transition of the paved areas to the apron. Homeboy's liking what he's seeing. Appreciate that. Oh, and I had noticed. Uh, sorry about that. We got Spencer's here. Uh, just giving a shout out to some of our chatters. Uh, TPR logo. Welcome to the stream. Don't. Uh, feel shy um, about if, anything you want to see in particular. Um, ask us a question and uh, we'll see what we can do for you.
And just to give those an idea of what I'm trying to accomplish here is uh, removing some of the uh, areas of these different layers so I can expose and clean up that edge of the paved area. And I'll make a comparison, I guess, to the apron on the track. Something that I just learned about uh, Photoshop CS6 the other day is when you're editing a text layer and your bounding box is too small for the text to fit into, if you drag your cursor over to the edge of the resizing boxes and it doesn't show up the drag icon, leave your mouse there for a split second and then it will switch to the drag icon. I didn't know that. I know you um, frequent using like DS6 and that. Um, I tend to frequent using uh, Paint Shop. Okay, we can see how this turns out. And plop this new texture back into the track and uh, reopen sandbox. Reopen track and sandbox, I should say. See what we look like. I was wondering why my computer was lagging so much, I left Sandbox open. <laughs> left it open? Yeah. Oh, as a, yeah, because you're working in uh, CS6, obviously. Yeah, see how this has cleaned this up really nice now. As compared to what, it was kind of choppy.
nice clean edge on there. I got some magenta showing through on this edge here. I have to clean that up. I got some overlap here. Oh, wow, I just look at your screen there. Big old Twitter bird. <laughs> it's funny. It's nice finding those way big textures like that, and you can spank them down as opposed to finding a really dinky one. And a PNG at that with transparent background. Oh, you gotta love that. Anything to save you from having to make that logo yourself. <laughs> Something weird I noticed with CX6, just kind of a side note here is it seems like recently the default stroke or outline size has changed from three to four pixels. I'm not sure why. Really? I don't mind. As, as I'm saying that, I see a button that says make default. <laughs> always, always tries to call you out. See, I, think, I thought the default on the stroke, that's after you rasterize, correct? Uh, it works a little bit different on that, but... Yeah, I can, I can change whatever I want it to be and then hit make default, so I must have done that by accident at some point. Oh. I always find myself... I probably got that feature, too, because I got an older version of uh, Photoshop. I'd say it's 4, but it works for what I needed to do. I believe that one's done. Two more to go to do? Yep, they look fairly easy. The only thing I'm not sure about is the website that's on the Ferris uh, mower billboard. The website URL? Yeah, it says um, mow faster with suspension. Something something dot com. Uh, have to look that one up. I'm sure it probably goes to Ferris Motors, mowers, I should say. I'm not sure. No, I had to apply that one I, uh, to a door, and I don't think they had a URL in there. It was just um. Simple, just the Ferris mowers.
One thing that can tend to get, to some extent, can get kind of annoying when you want a new texture, um, especially on an object that's not geometrically related. Um, find it necessary to have to close the track and reopen it in order to refresh. Get so used to it though, it's just second nature, but uh, can get annoying when you have to do it several times. Mm -hmm. See, like on, I've gotten so used to, like if I keep the track open and I'm adjusting a texture that's geometrically related, like a wall, um, I use the reload MIPS option, sandbox in the uh, properties for the texture. Wish there was something like that for the objects. Wishful thinking. Yeah, so I clean this edge up here a little bit. That's a little better. Probably go a little more, but I'll leave that alone for now. Satisfied with that for the moment. That looks so much better with that in there. Looking at the top view of that. Start getting some objects in there and it'll look even better. Okay, I want to close. Now I know the Circle K ad that is on the screenshot of the video and the one that's on the actual track is different. The one that I have painted is the more recent ad. Right. That's why I was saying I think some ones like that I think they tend to change, but the majority of them tend to stay pretty static. Oh, I really like that top one. I like them all really, but that, that top one that's simple, but yeah. Came out good. Oh, yes. Is it? Now, the Ferris Motors. Oh, I know what I going to do. It's going to look that up to see. Give you a hand on that one. I did find a fairly decent uh, uh, main logo. For which one? Ferris. Well, you got the one that I sent you, correct? Yeah, but I found another one that's slightly bigger. yet now like I said I think the one I sent you I had already scaled it down um, it's probably the same big one that the larger one that you found what I started off with it's a it's a fairly uh, well-known company I had never heard of it until we started doing this <laughs> yeah well you and me both um, actually I came came across it as a well-known company when I um, had done the Eldora build. PNG as well, I see. Or did you spank the background out? No, but it was, it was high quality, so it came out easy. Right. I'm going to close all this out. Need to save any of that now. Um, I th think I'm gonna go into what we were talking about offline there, James. Um, uh, applying the state switches to that BB6, which would be the one that contains the scoreboard. Let me call that up. Yeah, cool. That'll give you some insight yourself too, just to kind of understand what I'm applying, I guess, to it. It's not really that difficult. There's, you know, a slight bit of understanding.
at all the individual billboards here. BB1 through 9. And then I have the 3DS for BB6. Okay, here's the, oh yeah, you did finish that Wix one. So that was another um, venture in itself there too with that Wix filter. Yeah, every logo that I could find had the bottom half of the image that's on the billboard cut off, even the one on their website. Right. I remember you saying that. So, yeah, that was kind of a task in itself there, too. I mean, <laughs> none of these billboards have really been uh, super simple. I think that's because I jinxed it by that first one with the yellow book or whatever. Had everything pre-made, so I got spoiled. Yeah. here okay I remember what I did what I ended up doing here obviously the one I got open right now is the active one so that's during race weekend and this other one is when it's anything other than race weekend so like in testing and right now what it is is two separate object or two tests two separate textures for one object and it switches between it what we had talked about is using um, this blue area which is the back side of that billboard what i'm going to do is combine i thought i saved a layer of it i guess not so i'm going to do that now because we know we're not going to use uh, this particular scoreboard I don't need to get edited still got that big what I do with that that just reminds me I hope I didn't get rid of it the scoreboard you sent with the numbers that you want that's that was pretty juicy big I have it saved I can send it to you here in a little bit Deal. I think I've got it here. There it is. Look how big that thing is. That's cr that's crazy, juicy. And it's big enough that you can make the other numbers out of what's there. Yeah, no kidding. Um, and that's something too. That's that's going to be another, as far as like what uh, car numbers I guess to put in what positions. Um, you know, like. What I tend to do is like put like first either specific event or like who's what driver I guess is prominent there. You know, like say Steve Kinzer for instance, put his number as first place. Yeah, I guess that would be kind of an Easter egg. Um, you kind of have some freedom there. Right. Yeah, and that's more or less what I was getting at there. Um, Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this empty one, uh, this empty score burn, I'm going to put it in this blue area, which as I said, it would be the, normally, uh, initially, and normally would have been reserved for the back side of that top billboard object. Now, I'm trying to remember what did we agree on, James, as far as uh, putting back, uh, not removing the the entire back with just putting different texture in a different spot. I think it was just the yellow area, correct? Um, I was figuring on you using the blue area, and then I would use the yellow for the um, back side. And I do remember that conversation now. I did say that I was going to do that. Okay. Yeah, that's no big deal. Like I said, I I just didn't want to step on you doing it, you know what I mean? It's just, if you were already doing it, it doesn't make any sense, I guess, for us both to do it. <laughs> yeah, um, are you going to do it right now, or do I need to do that right now? Yeah, that's what I'm showing right now. That's what I'm in the process of doing. Take that off your hands. You've done enough of those billboards. 
four hours on that one, yeah, I think that's that's a bit much. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I'd say put the just leave me the yellow area, and I'll apply this background that I'm going to make in a little bit to that on the yellow part. Roger that. Uh, and then I'll what I'll do is when I remap that model, get it back to you. I'll put that backside on that yellow so that you have a texture to put on there. If you have something in particular in mind. I was going to screw around with it. Maybe try some different um, multiples of like plywood because I'm pretty sure that that is 8 feet tall. So the billboard is going to have a bunch of 4 by 8 sheets of plywood stacked next to each other. Probably either 4 or 5 of them. That should be pretty close. Let me crop this just a little. Yeah, I'll leave that alone. Again, I appreciate everybody hanging out with us here. Yes, absolutely. Um, so far, it's seeming to be a pretty good uh, better turnout than we had last Wednesday. We have any new viewers out there um don't be shy feel free to follow us uh, if you're liking what you see okay so basically all i've done here is put um zoom out one more time here put the the empty scoreboard area in a different area of this one here so that um, when I apply the state switch to the object it'll call up a diff depending on what uh, session you're in either race and or testing um, it'll call up and show either the empty or the um, lit all in one texture and I think I'm just gonna leave it as the BB6 um, just leave that the same we don't eliminate the BB6B I think I had it as But yeah, all I've done is just put that in the layer. I can turn that on and off. Um, eventually, once we get the numbers, uh, I'll put those in a separate layer later time. So I'll save this as a layered. I'm going to save that yellow area for James, as he had mentioned. He's going to put play around with a different texture for the back side for these two. And that's what's nice about these objects is they're all separate. Uh, to show that object view. 
each one of these billboards is a separate object. So our BB6 with the uh, scoreboard is the one in the middle. There it is. There's our BB6. Highlighted right now. Yep, there she is. Save this as a layered PSD. Uh, I want to rename this though. Make sure that's saved. Right there. Okay. Um, yeah. I guess while I'm in here, I'll call up this uh, script. You can just open it with Notepad. And as long as you save it to a save as opposed to a save as, as it'll save it just as a text document, that won't work. Um, you want to keep maintain that. PSG extension, um, but this is the the basic layout, I guess, for that particular billboard. If you can care to see that, basically what it starts out as is making a, an empty mesh, uh, so that um, you want to create a population switch, um, being able to shut it off um, by using the O key in game that ever is, uh, is necessary. Um, and then the first couple lines here that call up the different pass files, I'll, I'll end up creating two different pass files. One that's an active board, an active board I should say, that's not lit, and one that is lit. And as these lines carry down, I'm creating a weekend switch here as far as like when those two will show. Um, creating a weekend switch variable, state switch variable, which is weekend. Uh, for zero is during testing, that'll show just the board, which is the inactive. And in anything other than testing, which would be race weekend, uh, be, be it um, happy hour qualifying, and then the actual race will show the active board where it's lit. Um, that's that line, and then creating the population switch. Um, population switch. Now these variables, keeping in mind, um, these are just the ones that I use. That's easier for me to understand as far as like what it's doing. Um, as long you could put any type of variable that you want with a colon, as long as your variable, all this stuff in capital. Those are your commands um, as far as like what you want uh, when you call that script up in the Make 3 do what are you wanting it to do? Um, in this case here, uh, uh, with the population switch, this is a state switch variable population. Uh, previous one was state switch variable weekend. Um, and in this population switch, what it does is the zero is for when you have no, you don't want it to show at all. That's the first line uh, boardman that creates an empty mesh. Um, and for population switch one, which would be under all in this case, um, it'll show what's presented in the weekend switch, the line previous. So it'll basically look at what's going on in the weekend switch variable and say, okay, what session are we in? Okay, we're in testing. Okay, I show the inactive as opposed to um, race weekend. If they're in uh, happy hour qualifying actual race, okay, show that particular model and or texture. And then the last line is your output. 
what do you want to call this 3DO? I guess what what do you want make 3DO to spit out as far as its name? That's a general run through for that. That's pretty basic. I'm going to keep this up here so I can remember, I guess, what I need to call my pass files. Um, BB6A for the inactive, BB6B for the active. Um, I have two in there from a previous um, attempt at getting that in there. Um, but since I'm going to remap it, um, it's obviously going to be different. Uh, I suppose what I need to do is make a new texture uh, bitmap. Uh, this has no transparency in it, so I don't have to worry about adding an alpha channel. Alpha channel transparency. I'm gonna merge this down, flatten it, save it as a new bitmap. While I'm at it, I'm going to remove this other texture because I don't need that second texture anymore. Just the BB6. I'm going to leave it at that. Make sure that's saved it appropriately. Which it has. I'm going to fire up Max. Open that model up so we can remap it. A lot of windows open. Yeah, my desktop resolution is 4320 by 900, and my start bar goes from all the way to the left, almost all the way to the right now. <laughs> yeah, you got all kinds of stuff in there. I don't have quite that many, but yeah. I tend to keep all my um, stuff for the Firefox and whatever on the laptop just to kind of remove some resources uh, being used, especially getting that uh, start bar, task bar getting all cluttered. Okay, now I'm in max, and what I'm going to do now is call up that BB6 model, 3DS. Got to stay organized here. <laughs> and here's our object in Max. I'm going to change the environmental properties here. Let's shed some light on the subject here. Maybe hard to see the model actually with the the way the grid's colored and all that stuff, but I'll throw a texture on here real quick that I just made. There, now we can see what's going on here. In actuality, what I'm going to end up doing um, in the, as a part of remapping this, the first one I want to show, uh, for looking at the script, the first one um, that I want it to be is the empty, the inactive, non-lit. As it sits right now, I can actually make that pass file um, the way it sits right currently, which I'll do. I will need to remap it uh, to that texture, to that empty scoreboard. Yeah, let's spit this out as a pass.
So, yeah, as I said, um, I have two previous attempts at a pass file. Um, this is obviously the BB6B, so I'll overwrite that. It should still be the same, but I'm going to go ahead and just, just keep them consistent with the save over that. Um, some might tend to wonder, I guess, when looking in this perspective view of uh, Max here, the, the texture looks kind of pixelated. Um, I'm going to throw up a render here real quick to show you what it actually will look like. The render tends to make it uh, not so pixelated. This gives you a general idea in the perspective view. This is how it will look like, nice and crisp. Okay, now I'm going to do is apply a UVW unwrap modifier to this. This will call up all the uh, mapping coordinates of the texture to the model. That's, that's a jumbled mess in there by looking at it, but I'm going to filter these. Get just what I want, and I'm going to adjust this texture in the UVW window. Got the size of that um, the texture is a second. Okay. <clears throat> there, now I got the same representation of the texture in the UVW editing window. Okay. Let's highlight faces that we want to change. That's what I want to adjust. And I don't need to do a plan or map or anything like that because it's already been mapped. You can see the outline of it right here as, what, as to what it's showing on the model. And I want to basically move it to this thing and save a new pass file. Keeping it the same size, I don't want to modify the size of it. All I want to do is move it. And as you can see in the perspective, it's changing too as far as... I just deselected. No problem. See, the good thing about this one is it's not um, necessarily a um, screen or like a caution light or whatever where it would you'd be able to see the anomalies as far as it changing from one state to the other. So I got some freedom in, of not getting it exactly where it is on the one that's lit.
I'm having to modify it just slightly. The actual mapping coordinates of those two of those uh, selected faces. How are we doing on time anyway, James? I was paying attention. Uh, so here, looks like we've been live for an hour and 13 minutes. At 13 minutes? Been live for an hour and 13 minutes, yep. Awesome, okay. Okay, so, as I've said, I've moved um, those faces uh, to the different area of the texture, the new texture created. Now that's what's showing on the uh, actual model. Render that real quick. Now we have an, inact an inactive object. And I'm going to save this as a new pass file. Not stepping on the original 3DS at this point. I always have that to refer to as far as uh, where that original mapping was. Export. Export this out as in uh, pass BB6A. Looking at my notes, there it is. Overwrite that. Okay, now we have. Yeah, here's the 3DS. Two pass files I just created. For some reason, it's still got a little time on it. Okay. I love Windows sometimes when they show you I'm in a detail view and it's still showing me for the old, the original pass files that I created. Still got yesterday's date on it. Look at the modified date. Oh, yeah. Darn Windows. Microshaft. <laughs> you know, you like to use that term a lot. I get a kick out of that. So now what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm gonna open up my make 3DO directory. I should probably make this more accessible, but it's worked for me. It's I'm so used, I guess, going there anymore. It's just second nature. Uh, what I'm gonna do is um, copy these path files. Uh, pass files the script which is this and my texture bb6 here and I think I'm gonna put the MIP texture in there as well so I can call it up on view 3d that is a must if you want to use it uh, if you want the object to show in view 3d Need to make a new okay B six B. I don't need. I'll delete that. I got to remember in this one here, as I said, we talked about this offline as far as like uh, what parameters to use on this. I'm going to keep it at the uh, 10 1. 
just for humor's sake. Yeah, I'm going to go through after they're all done and change them all to, uh, what did you say, 6-3? 6-3. I would keep them, and then obviously um, stepping it down, I guess, on the size. Yeah, it'd, it'd end up being like 16 megabytes if we didn't reduce it, so. Right. Times 9, that's way too big. Right. I mean, yeah, we want to show off, as I guess, as much of the time spent, I guess, on those, but not quite that much, right? Yeah, we got to stay a little bit close to uh, 56k friendly. I don't know how many people still use that, but. You'd be surprised how I many actually probably still do. Yes, I've come across something like that. Okay, so I made a new texture. New MIP, I should say. to put that in the make 3do directory there and I'm gonna call up my command prompt I know I've mentioned this in a previous stream. Um, I'm at the Make3DO directory. Um, the command that I'm putting in is to call up the Make3DO uh, executable. I'm putting in a minus S because I have a script that I want it to read. Now I gotta tell it which script to read. In this case, BB6 PSG. And I don't have any reflections or anything like that on there, so I don't need any other parameters um, after telling it what script to read. So I'll push enter. And that has spit out 3DO. Now I can look at this because I got 3D SIMED. And this is what it'll basically look like during race. Okay, but I'm going to call it up in view 3D to ensure myself of how it's going to present itself in the track. And that's how she'll look there. Um, see, what's even nice in this View 3D application here is I can go in here and change the state. Let's do see right now. I got it on weekend one. I'm going to put it to zero, the value, and that should make that top half, which represents the scoreboard, it should be unlit. I wasn't paying attention there. I accidentally overwrote all that work that I did yesterday on the charger. That's all right. I got multiple copies. Oh, my goodness. Thank <laughs> goodness. Yep. But as you can see, with this model I'm showing in here, I got it on uh, the weekend zero, which is testing, testing mode in the game, and the scoreboard is not lit. So I'll put it back on a 2, should be actual race, and now it's lit. 
I know those switches are in there. So we'll unload that, close that out. And we'll put this in our track. Uh, first of all, I'm going to back it up in my objects. Jeez, no one's asking any questions, James. I feel like uh, <laughs> we're talking to ourselves sometimes. Ah, uh, sorry. I grabbed the wrong file again. Hang on. <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh, I see you've got the... Um, just looking at your feed again, you got the two... Duplicated, is that correct? Yeah. That was intentional. Somewhere my naming got screwed up. Oops. I almost had a similar problem here because I had uh, the one that we had previously worked on where we were using the two different uh, textures for the one object. I, have, I had to eliminate those because we obviously don't need those anymore. Okay, all I'm doing here is just applying the new texture and object for the BB6 object so that we can uh, load it back up on our track. There should be. Now you can do the same thing that I did in the View 3D uh, for the state switches as far as the race weekend and whatnot. Um, I'll also demonstrate the population switch in here, which again you can do that in View 3D as well. I'm going to switch the state variable to zero. Scoreboard's off. This just giving me, um, you know, just a, just a nice uh, reassurance, I guess you could say, that um, I know this thing is working like it should. I'll use the population switch. Uh, keep that at zero. That'll remove all those billboards. It's working properly. As well as everything else. Yep, and they're all gone. I'll turn those back on. And there they are. <clears throat> so we know that object's working correctly. Uh, something else that needing to be done, uh, particularly I guess on this main grandstand, is to add some reflection on the windows for the pressed uh, media box. Press box media box. Uh, in fact, that might be something I can actually probably show too. If I can get that put together. Um, next to, as well, I guess, it's, and it'll probably be a separate object as opposed to applying it right to the main grandstand object itself, but um, some 3D people, 3D crowds. 
Okay, done with this script. Close that out. And I'm through with this model. Close that out. And as I said, um, did not step on the original 3DS uh, for that particular billboard. So I can always call that back up um, if need be to adjust any mappings or whatever down the road. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. I almost forgot. I need to remap back sides of those two. Yeah, let me do that. Almost got ahead of myself. Call that model up again. Go to the back side here. Okay, put that modifier back on her. I'll get my texture on first. See now as you'll see on the back side of this object because James had initially had the blue area on that texture I'll show Yeah, the area where I put the inactive board was the blue area. That was the top of the back side. Yeah, the back side of the top billboard, and the yellow is the bottom back side. So now what it's showing is that on the back side. So what I'm going to do is remap both back sides to be both on the yellow in this texture. All right, aside from the one that you're working on, the scoreboard there, I believe the front is done. All the fronts? Looks like it. Thank goodness, right? Exactly. Now, luckily, I only have to create one background and just apply it to all the other textures. Backside, you mean? Yeah, sorry. Um, now, I know on just this one particular one that I'm doing right now, that one will have that particular mapping, but as far as the other ones, do you want me to do those as well? Remap those? I won't have to. I'll just apply it to the blue and the yellow on the other ones. Roger that. In other words, you just put. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Another good reason why I guess they're all separate objects.
there. Now I got them both. Same area of that texture. Backside. Looks good. Got about a half hour left on this stream here. Roger that. Yeah, we'll save this as a separate 3DS. I keep that original. You just never know. So I'll have to make two new pass files. Redo that model. This one's A, or B, I should say. Yeah, this one's the B. That's pretty uh, cool look. Kind of looks like weathered wood. What you got going on there? Working on the back side there. Kind of looks like weathered wood. Right. It's kind of cool. I want to keep that. Probably more than one application there, yeah. Since I'm having to uh, save a new pass, having to remap that backside, I had to redo that. So, okay. One thing that's bad 
kind of a downside, I guess, with the pass files. You cannot import the pass file. That's for export for export purposes only. You can't open it, say, like as a 3DS. We re export this out as the BB6A as file. Write that. And put those two new pass files. Into the make 3 do directory. Okay, I'm gonna take this one out. I'll have a new object. Reload the track, make sure that works. So by default, when you open a track in Sandbox, it's, it's automatically um, in race mode. So if you care to want to look at it, I guess, in any other session, like be it testing, what have you, you have to tell it that. But as you'll be able to see here, as I'm showing, I remapped the back side of that BB6 you know, to be in the yellow area. As, as you can see, the other ones have their own significance as far as the top and the bottom. Those will be separate. The other, uh, they each have their own texture. So. Don't need to do anything with that. Okay. Now I should be able to close this out. Were you going to give a sneak peek at uh, how it drives and how it looks in-game? You know, you know, I was just thinking about that too, we were talking about that offline, I think I might do that. Um, now we're coming up to the tail end of the feed here, I think I might do that. Um, I'm going to create, pack this up here, if i got time. Yeah, I think I will do that. Thanks for reminding me. Um, keeping in mind, I guess, when I show this, I guess in, um, make a test drive on it, whatever, it is by no means anywhere complete. The way it drives is going to be really different. Yeah, you guys have been watching us focus mainly on the visual stuff. We haven't really touched the track itself too much. Yeah, as far as any banking in it and whatnot. Rest assured, it'll get the same attention to detail. Oh, yes. In fact, I can probably give a little bit of um, demonstration here as far as how we pack these things up, too. Um, I, I know some out there tend to like to use the WinMIP, WinMIP 2 to pack tracks up. Um, I've been more privy, I guess, to use this make dat. Uh, put that right into your unpack track folder. Uh, the only critical part is you have to make sure your track folder 
and your PTF are named the same so that when it spits the DAT file out it'll load correctly in the game. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, all my items in here is what I want to be presented in my DAT file for now. It's obviously not going to be finished as I said. I'm going to rename my PTF here. Let me get out of sandbox here. I want to step on that. That texture looks really cool. What's that? That wood. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is neat. It almost kind of looks like cement in a way. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, so I've renamed my PTF, same as my track folder. And... Make sure I don't have any other garbage in there. Now I'm going to run to make that. Let's just double click it. And then there's my dat. I'll just cut and paste this into game directory. Which I already have the track in there. And I'm going to take out, I'm going to back up what I have in here. I got a PTF when I was doing all the X eggs, I guess, for the outside of the track there. Testing that out. And since I've already got all these billboards and these other objects that are loose in here, in the DAT file, I don't need them in there, so I'm going to take those out. Yeah, we don't have um, any LPs in here which control the AI. That's another good point. So this thing cannot be erased in this fashion um, in anything other than testing mode. Okay, so I have my new DAT. Good to go there. Let's try this thing out. Take a spin around, a couple spins around uh, GTA Charlotte. I've been testing this thing in the trucks. I think it's a blast.
Yeah, hey, just watching your race there. <laughs> Liking it? Getting that three wheel action, I love it. Yeehaw. Get my test, my guys from practice here. Gonna take a ride here behind the drive right through here. This will all eventually all be pavement, but yeah, the billboards. Well, as soon as he's done lapping there, I think we're probably going to go ahead and end the stream. Bring her in the pits right now. So you tend to gradually climb up here. That was something I needed to test anyway as far as the uh, changing this ramp. I got made here for paid exit too. Oh, yeah. And that is a couple laps at Dirt Tracker Charlotte so far. This is definitely going to be a fun one. Just a bit of a taste. Now that I know that that um that I just created works that's supposed to it loads I can delete this backup and I'll go here and clean up uh, my unpacked one as well but uh yeah that's the process used on this end as far as uh testing tracks out We're coming up to the end of our stream, as James had mentioned there, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. Don't be shy, though. I like to hear um, from our viewers. As far as if uh, stuff we're doing is it too boring, let's just spice it up a little bit. You got a question? Shoot it up there. See what we can do for you. Definitely, definitely. If, again, if you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch Archive later, uh, feel free to send a message on there, and uh, we'll try to get back to you. As always, appreciate you guys watching, and stay tuned, and we'll let you know when the next stream is. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.